Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to my channel about crypto. In this video, I'll be talking about ETH gas prices, how to set them up, especially how to set them up post EIP 1559 update and how to make sure that you don't overpay for your gas, but at the same time, you may also make sure that your transaction goes through. This is especially important when the price of gas go up really fast or they are at the high level, for example, because of a new NFT drop or because certain token just became really popular and everyone is buying it. So let's have a look at how gas functions or how gas prices function. What we see here is if gas price breakdown. And important thing here is that this is post EIP 1559 update. So post August 2021. So if you're used to old way of dealing with gas prices, this may be a little bit confusing. So there are four elements to the gas price. Two of them you can control and the other two you cannot control. The ones you cannot control are the base fee and gas limit. The base fee depends on the, how busy the network is and that fee goes up sometimes quite rapidly as the network gets more and more congested. Gas limit depends on the type of transaction. We'll look at some examples in a minute. But basically, this is something you cannot change. The minimum gas limit is 21,000 um, units, and that's just a simple transaction such as moving ETH from one wallet to another. But a lot of transactions will have much higher ga gas limit because of essentially the contract being more complex. There are two other elements which you can control, and that's your priority fee and max fee. Priority fee is the fee that goes to the miners. It's like a tip that goes to the miners, an incentive to process the transaction faster. And max fee, well, essentially, if you look at this bit here at the bottom, if you multiply the base fee, so whatever the network currently requires by the gas limit, which is the amount of gas required to, to process the transaction, and then you add to it priority fee, so the tip for the miners, again, multiplied by the gas limit, you will get max fee. So essentially the maximum fee you pay for the whole transaction is base fee times gas limit and priority fee times gas limit. So how do you use it in practice and how do you know what sort of numbers you should put in? Well, first of all, you need to go to a website that gives you an indication of what are current gas prices. And the good one is blocknative.com slash gas estimator. I'll put a link in, in the description to this video, which basically gives you an idea of what are current gas prices. So you can see base fee here at the bottom, which is at the moment 92.9 GUI. GUI is just a very small unit, essentially it's a very small fraction of ether. And one GUE is, oh, I forgot, I think it's like one billionth of, of one ETH or something like that. It's, it's a very, very small amount, but once you start multiplying it by hundreds and thousands that are involved in, in each transaction, well, suddenly that can amount to tens of dollars or hundreds or even thousands of dollars. So your base fee is 93 GUE. And priority fee, as you can see, that doesn't really vary that much. It's from 1.07 to 1.88 GUI at the moment. Max, <coughs> sorry, maximum fee is essentially your base fee times two plus the priority fee. And you can see that at the moment, actually, the network is pretty quiet because the difference is minimal, regardless whether you want very slow or very fast transaction. If you want your transaction to be processed quickly, for example, you want to take part in a new NFT drop or you're buying some tokens and you're worried that the price will go up quite rapidly, the only figures you're really interested in on this website is this option here all, all the way to the, to the left. Because anything below that as you can see, has lower probability of being uh, processed in the next next block. So you want to make sure that your transaction goes through as fast as possible. Okay, so how does it work in practice? Well, if I go to my MetaMask, 
Okay, so I have my MetaMask here. If I go to, let's say, Golem and I want to exchange that for ETH, I won't actually perform the transaction because there's just not enough, the amount is not large enough to do it, but I'll show you the principle of how it works. So the important bit here is estimated gas fee, which at the moment it's $83, and maximum gas fee, which is 150. I can click this edit button here, and this now allows me to put custom settings. Of course, the fee now dropped uh, because the network clearly is going a bit quiet. So great. But let's say that the network, the network is quite busy and the prices of gas are going up. What do I do then? Well, I leave gas untouched because as you remember from earlier, this is one of those numbers I cannot change. It depends on the contract. So the minimum number here is 21,000. In this case, it is 20, 222,105. Basically, this is the amount of gas required for that transaction to be executed. The two numbers I can change is max priority fee and max fee. Max priority fee is at the moment set to 2 gray. That's the tip that goes to the miners. And as you can see here on the website, well, the suggestion is that I leave it at two. Personally, I would, if I really want the transaction to go through fast, I would change it to five. As you can see, it doesn't really impact the price much. And then we have our max fee, which is the most important number here, because basically that's the maximum overall cost of the transaction that you are prepared to pay. So at the moment, it's 155 guay, which would be $130. As you can see, see here, the suggestion is that 148 should be sufficient. So I could just change that to that. Of course, you can see that these numbers keep, keep changing all the time. And especially when the network is busy, they can start going up very, very rapidly. So if you definitely want to push the transaction through, it's better to put higher number here rather than lower. And you may end up overspending a bit on gas, but at least you know that you are ahead because the last thing you want to do is put, I don't know, well, I just put 148 and in the meantime, it jumped here to 185. So that's already not enough for the transaction to be processed. So. That's essentially how you how you change those settings. Now, how can you know what amount is sufficient during during the drop if it's let's say an F NFT drop? Well, it depends on the type of an NFT. If it's something, if it's a project that's not massively popular, then you can probably go by by those numbers. Just put slightly higher figure in, uh, like I said, because these numbers will be going up very very quickly but don't go crazy overboard with it. However, if it's a big project which had a lot of supporters, a lot of hype built around it, you have to be prepared to put really high number in. I was taking part in the Jungle Freaks uh, drop, public uh, sale on, uh, on Friday. And I remember when people were chatting in the Discord, well, a lot of people were thinking that around 0.1 or 0.2 ETH was, was more than enough. So essentially something like 400 or $800. And there were others who were saying that, well, actually the, the cost of gas will be closer to one ETH because they took part in some really big hyped up projects before and, and the gas was absolutely insane. So the best way to check it is actually going through previous projects that, that were really popular. And the easiest way to do it is go to OpenSea and find a project that was popular. Like for example, uh, the crypto dads. Okay, and here, if you click on any of them, when you scroll down in the details section, you can see the contract address. And then when you click on that contract address, it will open it in Etherscan. And you can see all the transactions for that particular project. And of course, there's loads of them. If you want to see all of them, you just have to click here, click to view full list. 
and as you can see well in this case there is 470 pages annoying thing is that if you want to find a relevant page you just have to go manually through page by page but basically what you need to do is get to the section where here under method it says mint so that's where the not the pre-sale mint but the actual mint so that's when the public sale took place and see what sort of fees failed and what sort of fees went through and that gives you an indication of roughly how much gas you may need for the next big project so i will save you clicking through dozens of pages and I actually opened a few here so as you can see here these all transactions that those were all mints on the during the public sale and i opened a few sample ones here in this particular project you could within one transaction you could include up to five tokens and that's another thing that a lot of people are interested in if there are multiple nfts within one transaction do you multiply gas or do you just put the base gas fee well it's somewhere in between it shouldn't be as much as five separate transactions in this case but at the same time it will be more than just minting one nft so how much it is exactly it depends on a particular contract so it's quite hard to estimate and again you probably want to go a bit higher rather than lower especially that the more nfts you have well essentially the cost of gas is divided by all of them so overall it should still be worth it but in this case five nfts well the cost of minting one was 0 0.07 eth so the total cost of minting them was 0.35 eth so around 1300 dollars but then transaction fee was 0.76 ETH. So that was actually close to $3,000 in this case. And we know that this transaction went through. There's another one here, another five. But in this case, actually someone paid close to $5,000 to have them minted. Well, actually around $6,000 if you include also the cost of the NFTs. So as you can see, those numbers can go up really, really high another example here of course because you could mint multiple ones not many people would just mean just one because it makes sense to to get more of them so here someone minted two and even for two the cost of gas was still around fourteen hundred dollars so if it's a big popular project you have to be prepared to well essentially spend at least a grand worth of gas or potentially much more and of course, as the price of Ether goes up, that fee is likely to be even more expensive because at the end of the day, we're paying in ETH rather than, rather than dollars. So that gives you some sort of indication of how much gas you may need for a transaction. And the last thing I wanted to show you is something that's quite important if you're exchanging tokens. So let's say on Uniswap, if I connect my MetaMask, I will try to exchange again, let's say Golem to Tether. And what happens here is that often you may find that actually there are multiple gas fees for a single transaction. So as you can see here, I have to first allow the Uniswap protocol to use my Golem tokens. In, this doesn't always come up, but in this case it does. So I have to pay $20 just to allow Uniswap to access my tokens. And then there will be another fee for actually exchanging them. I will reject this one because that would make absolutely no sense. You will find that with many tokens, there are those two stages or for example you may want to exchange one token for another but there is no direct route between them so you have to ex exchange let's say one token to ether and then ether to that other token or something similar to what we are seeing here first you get sort of confirmation for which you have to pay and that fee may be quite small like in this case 20 dollars 
well, if the amount to exchange would be much higher, $20 is not bad. But then it may turn out that the actual fee for exchanging those tokens is like $100 or 150 It actually happened to me in the past when I was trying to, to process transaction like this and I thought, okay, well, that's, that's not bad. I was actually quite surprised because I knew the network was busy. And at the time I didn't realize that there are multiple steps. So that's something you need to be aware of because, because essentially the transaction may end up costing you much more than, than you expected. So just to summarize this video, to estimate your gas fee, you need to check a website where, where you can see what are the current what are the current max fees and priority fees for various transaction speeds. And you then adjust your priority fee and your max fee accordingly to that. If you want to be certain that your transaction goes through, especially when the network is really busy, then you need to put slightly higher figure. That's the max fee. And then essentially just hope that transaction goes through. And the last thing I wanted to mention is if your transaction gets stuck, again, during NFT drops, that's quite common thing. Everyone is buying. Maybe the amount of gas you put in, you thought that it would be enough, but actually it wasn't. Your, your transaction gets stuck. In the meantime, you notice that the token the NFT is sold out and you can no longer get one. Make sure that you don't cancel your transaction. You just let it run. It will fail. You will lose some of the gas, but it will be far less than canceling your transaction. This is really important because prior to EIP 1559, it was the other way around. You paid more if you didn't cancel. Now, if you cancel, you may not lose the whole amount, but you certainly will lose a lot, very large chunk of it. If you just let it fail, you will probably lose about five or 10 percent at the most, possibly even less than that. So it definitely makes sense to let the transaction fail. You may lose, I don't know, out of thousand dollars, you may lose like fifty dollars or so, but it's far better than losing the whole thousand dollars worth of gas. This is something a lot of people are afraid of when they are putting in really high gas figure that they won't get the NFT and they will lose all the gas. So this is one way to go around it. Just let it fail and then majority of the money you spend on gas should be safe. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments section. If you find those videos helpful, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.